Okay, so here we go. It is Monday, August 13th, 2018. We're going to be doing some factoring. Uh, in this factoring, <clears throat> this should all be a review, but the first step always has to be the same. First step you want to do is you want to always, always, always look to see is there something that all the terms have in common that I can take out. So if I look at my first example here, I notice that only two of the terms have an X, so I can't take out an X because all three terms do not have that in common. If I look at 50, negative 60, and positive 18, I can see that they all are even, so they all at least have a two. So let's see, if I take out a two, what do I have left inside? Two times what is 50X squared? That would be 25x squared. 2 times what is negative 60x? That would be negative 30x. And 2 times what is, neg is positive 18? That would be positive 9. Now, if I'm unsure as to whether 2 was the biggest number, or if I want to know maybe I could have taken out a 4 or a 6 or some number that's bigger, how I check that is I look here. Is there any number that both, I'm sorry, that all of these three could be divided nicely by? And the answer is no. These two are divisible by 5, but 9 is not. 30 and 9 are divisible by 3, but 25 is not. Since these ones no longer have anything in common, 2 was the biggest number that I could take out. Um, if you remember from your example on Friday, the very first problem we multiplied was a monomial times, I think it was a trinomial, and that's exactly what we are undoing here. We're doing the very reverse. We're taking out the monomial that was multiplied through. So factoring here is the exact opposite of the multiplying we were doing on Friday. All right, from here, I need to factor this guy. Now, let me talk about this for a minute. There are many different ways that teachers teach factoring. Some people teach um, guess and check. Some people teach uh, a T-chart. Some people teach a magic X, a snowflake, a box method. There's all sorts of different methods that people teach uh, factoring in. I use something called the snowflake. Um, I'm gonna show it to you here and that's what I'm gonna use here. But if you use a different method that you learned before that makes sense to you, as long as you continue using it correctly, I'm totally fine with that, okay? So you should still end up in the same place. So here's how the snowflake works. I make an X and then I put a line through the middle of it. That's my snowflake. What's going to happen on my snowflake? Well, let's see. I'm going to draw a big one for you. On the top, I'm going to write whatever A times C is. What do I mean by A times C? Well, remember all of your quadratics are AX squared plus BX plus C. This is A and that's C. That's what I'm talking about here. So if I look here at my trinomial, A is 25 and C is 9, and 25 times 9 is 225. That's what goes on the top of my snowflake, okay? On the bottom of my snowflake, I'm going to put whatever B is, that middle term. In this case, it's negative 30. Now here's the tricky part. Right here and right here, I need to find two numbers that multiply to get whatever I put on the top and add to get whatever I put on the bottom. So in my example, I need two numbers that multiply to get 225 and add to get negative 30. Well, the two most common numbers to get 30 would be 20 and 10 or 15 and 15. I happen to know that 15 times 15 is 225. 15 times 15, there's my 225. So I think I can say 15 and 15 because when I multiply them, I get 225, and when I add them, I get, uh-oh, I get positive 30, but I need negative 30. So what can I do? Well, in order to get negative 30, both of those have to be negative, right? Negative 15 plus negative 15 is negative 30. Now, I can't just slap on some negatives without checking to see if it still multiplies to get that top number. Does negative 15 times negative 15 still get me a positive 225? 
Yes, so I do have my answers. Okay, now the last two spots, I'm gonna take that A value and I'm gonna put A in both of those locations. And then this X squared, I'm gonna split it up and give one over here and one over here. So up here, my A value is 25. So I put 25 on both of those. And that X squared, I split up into X and X. Okay, because technically my 225, that was 25 X squared times nine. So it's 225 X squared. I'm just splitting up that X. Okay, last step. I'm gonna take this and look at this. If this was a fraction, how does it reduce? 25x over negative 15, those would both divide by five and that gives me 5x over negative three. On the other side, I do the same thing. 25x over negative 15, that would reduce to 5x over negative three. So I'm gonna have two parentheses because again, I'm trying to unfoil this figure out what the binomials or the trinomials or whatever they were, uh, whatever they were before they multiplied to get that. So 5x and negative three, here's how this becomes a parenthesis. 5x comes first and it's a minus three because it's a negative three. If that was a positive three, it would be plus three right there. This guy, 5x minus three also. And then lastly, I cannot forget that two that I took out in the first step. He's got to still be out front. Now, in I am one and I am two, you would have been fine there. In I am three, since we're getting a little more difficult, I would hope that you would recognize that when those two things match exactly, it is actually a better way or a higher level of thinking to call that 5x minus 3 squared, and that's where I'd like you to go to for these guys. Okay? All right, let's practice some more snowflake. I'm going to jump down here first. So again, step one, factor out your greatest common factor, your GCF. What do they have in common? Do all three terms have an F? No, there's no F down here. Are 7, 12, and 5 all divisible by the same thing? Nope. So they don't have anything in common, so I can go straight to my snowflake. So going back to my snowflake, what goes on top? A times C. 7 times 5. What is 7 times 5? 35. On the bottom, I put B. What is B in this case? 12. Now I need two numbers that multiply to get 35, and add to get 12. I'm pretty sure that those are 7 and 5. Do I need to worry about any negatives? Nope, because it's all positive right there. 7 times 5 is positive 35. Positive 7, positive 5 gives you positive 12 when you add them. All right, on the top here, I'm going to take A, put it in both places, and that F squared, I'm going to divide between the two. Can I reduce either of these sides? This guy, he's gonna reduce, the sevens cancel, and that leaves me f over one. And seven f over five, that doesn't reduce. So let's see. f over one, that would be f, and then positive one. And this one would be seven f and positive five. So this is what was being multiplied in order to get that as its result. Now, Mrs. Franken, what happens if I put five and seven instead of seven and five? Well, that's totally fine. The only thing that's gonna happen is your seven F plus five parentheses is gonna come first and then your F plus one is gonna come second. Doesn't matter what order your parentheses are, as long as one of your parentheses is F plus one and the other parentheses is seven F plus five, you've done what you need to do, okay? All right, I'm gonna move to this guy now. Do all of these terms have an N in it? Yes. Do they all have more than one N? No. It looks like because that one only has one, I can only take out one N. Let's talk numbers now. 10, 6, negative 16. Those are all divisible by 2. So I think 2N I can take out. 
2n times what is 10n to the third? 5n squared. 2n times what is 6n squared? 3n. And 2n times what is negative 16? Negative 8. So again, I'm going to look here. 5n squared, 3 They don't have an n in common. 5, 3, and 8, they don't have anything in common. So 2n was the biggest thing I could take out. So let's go snowflake. What goes on the top? 5 times negative 8, which is negative 40. And on the bottom, I put b, which is 3. So I need two numbers that multiply to get negative 40 and add to get 3. I think 8 and 5, or 5 and 8, however you want to write it. They're not going to multiply to negative 40, though. Hmm. So one of them has to be a negative, right? So I have a negative times a positive gives me a negative. Which one do I make negative? Does it matter? It absolutely matters. Because remember, they still have to add to get positive 3. If I make that 8 negative, what's 5 plus negative 8? It's not positive 3. It's negative 3. If I make the 5 negative, that will add with positive 8 and get me a positive 3. Does it still multiply to get what I need it to get? Negative 5 times 8 is negative 40, and I've got the positive 3. I'm good to go. So I'm going to put my a value, and I'm going to take that n squared and break it up. Does anything reduce? Yes, 5n over negative 5. That's going to reduce to n over negative 1. Can 5n over 8 reduce? Nope. So what are my two parentheses? This one is n minus 1. This one is 5n plus 8. And then this 2n, I have to remember to put down. That was the very first thing I factored out before I did the snowflake. Okay. All right. I'm going to come up here to do this guy next. Again, I want to start to see, do they have a greatest common factor? They don't both have an M, but they both have at least 4 in common. If I were to take out a 4, 4 times what is 16M squared? 4M squared. And 4 times what is negative 4? Negative 1. Now, this is a special type of problem. This one is called a difference of squares. And there is a shortcut to do this one. If you don't want to do the shortcut, you can do the snowflake. Just know that what you have here is your 4 is your A value, and your negative 1 is your C value. What is your B value? Remember the B would have just the plain old M, not the M squared? Your B value is 0. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Your B value would be 0, and you can go through the snowflake like that. Okay, two numbers that multiply to get negative 4, that would be 2 and negative 2, and yes, they add to get 0. So you would put 4m and 4m, what does 4m over 2 reduce to? 2m over 1, and 4m over negative 2 reduces to 2m over negative 1. What do you notice about those? Well, if I have 2m plus 1, and 2m, oops, 2m minus 1, let's keep that 4 in front just for good measure. Do you notice that 4 is what we call a square number? It's 2 squared, or 2 times 2. m squared is a square number. You can see the square right there. It's m times m. And 1 is a square number because it's 1 times 1. So I have the square root of 4m squared, which is 2m. I wrote that first. 1 comes last, make one a positive and one a negative, and that's your shortcut for your difference of squares. Say what? Let me review that really quickly. If I had something like this, x squared minus 9, this is a square number, this is a square number, it's 3 squared. So here's my shortcut. The square root of x squared is x. I put that first. The square root of 9 is 3. I put that second. Make 1 a plus, 1 a minus, that's where you get your answer from. By the way, can I check my answer on any of these? 
Absolutely. If you want to check your answer on this, multiply it back out. If I multiply this, x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Three, 3 times x is positive 3x. Three, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Those two cancel. I have x squared minus 9. As long as I get what I originally started out with, I know I factored it correctly. Okay? So again, there's that one if you still need to write it a little bit. And let's get down to that last problem. All right, this last problem is a little tricky because there's two variables in it. Do you see that? I see a W and I see an X. What well, one thing I do notice is that even though there's a W in each of the terms, all of them only have one W, which means I can factor that out pretty easily. And then 30, negative 56, and 24, again, I know that they at least have two in common. I don't know if they have anything higher than that, so we'll start with the two. So 2w times what gives you 30wx squared? Well, that would be 15x squared. 2w times what gives you negative 56wx? That would be negative 28x. And 2w times what gives you 24w? That would be positive 12. So how do I know if 2 was the biggest number they have in common? Check what's left. Do they have anything in common? If they do, for example, if all three of these were divisible by three, I would have to take a three out, and what would I do with that three? I would multiply it by the two. Okay, so that would mean I would have six W out front. But I don't think they're all divisible by three because 28 is not divisible by three. I think I'm stuck. That's as far as I can go. So I'm going to go ahead and snowflake. What goes on the top of my snowflake? 15 times 12, which is... 180. On the bottom I write negative 28. I need two numbers that multiply to get 180 and add to get negative 28. So let's see what we've got. Now um, let's see 180 is kind of a big number. 180 divided by 9 is 20. 9 and 20 close to 29, 28 but not quite there. Um, if I divide it by 8, don't get a nice number. Let's do, let's do 6. 6 and 30. I'm kind of further away, aren't I? 6 and 30 are further away from 28 than the 9 and 20 were. So let's go the other way. 180 divided by 10. 10 and 18. That'll get me 28. So now let's talk about our negatives. I have a positive 180, so if they're going to multiply to positive 180, it's either positive 10 and positive 18, or negative 10 and negative 18. But if they have to add to get negative 28, I think we got to deal with the negatives there. Okay, so now I put A in both of these, and I split up that X squared. 15X over 10, that does reduce. I can divide by 5, and that gives me what? 3X over negative 2. And over here, 15x over negative 18, I think I can divide by 3. That'll give me 5x over negative 6. So, one parenthesis is 3x minus 2. The other one is 5x minus 6. And the last step I have to remember, I have to bring down, bring down that 2w that I took out in the first step. Okay? All right, we're going to spend a few days on factoring. Again, remember, if you know another method that you used last year and you were successful using it, feel free to keep using that, uh, that particular method. As long as you're getting to the right answers, then I'm not concerned about what way you're taking to get there. Okay? All right, your homework is, let me see, it's worksheet 6.4a, factoring number one. Nope, that's not right. Your homework is 6.4aa. My bad. 6.4 AA is your homework, and I will have that passed out for you. All right, happy studying.